I'm going to go over the uh, coilover setup and the spindle or the knuckle, whatever you want to call it. So the knuckle is pretty straightforward. Uh, it comes cut and modified. You can see the extra bracing on here. And there's also a stop and that's your steering stop right there your adjustable steering stop so a plate gets added to it uh, to the knuckle there and on mine this is my the first off of the first car that I did there was a mod for the uh, camber adjustment you can see the size of the hole is larger here on the bottom and that's what we were told to do on the early instructions and now what everybody does and what I su suggest doing is just oblonging your strut mount holes um, you know sideways and then you can get your your camber adjustment off of that This is kind of a pain to drill out. Actually, it's a huge pain. But these are already done, so um, I run negative five on this car camber, uh, negative five, five and a half, somewhere around there. So I don't have to modify this on my other car. Uh, I just, I just uh, hollowed those out, or you know, oblonged them out, and got got my adjustment that way. So I'm not going to be doing that on this. Uh, your coilovers should come uh, with preset preload. And your upper mount is going to look like that. I just mentioned that because I have the radial bearing upgrade on these. And I put a little anti-seize on the contact points down here and up here. Probably not necessary, but I like to put a little bit of anti-seize on there. But the important part is that with the Maxim Motorsports caster camber plates, their instructions for the spacers and stuff are different. You're going to follow the feel instructions. You should get them with the coilovers, but if you don't, you have... Your coilover with your dust boot and your spring. There's your top mount that slides on. When you run the feels, um, you get this sleeve right here. Okay. You'll get this thick bushing. Thick bushing goes on. The sleeve goes on with two thick bushings or spacers. So you can see the sleeve right there, two of the thick bushings or sleeves, and then this one. And that's it. Uh, the Maxim Motorsport says you need a spacer up top, not just to bolt this directly onto the uh, caster camber plate, but that's exactly what you're going to do. So here is your setup from feel. That's it. There's no thread sticking out. Hopefully you can see there's the little notch right there and it's pretty much going to be level with uh, the bottom of it. it's going to be level with the top of the nut so that's all that you get sticking out and with the adjusters on there you may have to put like a thin washer between the hood and the hinge just so it doesn't contact right here or if it does it's just slight usually not a problem
and I'll go over the preload, but I pretty much set these where they were. Um, you know, there's no slack in the spring, so if this was at full droop, uh, there's no slack. Everything moves freely. Pretty straightforward here. Ball joint goes on the Steeda uh, X2, you know, times two ball joint. Okay, so that's on there. You can see I have some adjustment because of that oblong hole in the knuckle and also because the top mount's already slotted some. So we have that for adjustment. I already have the plates move forward and up. Um, so when I do the alignment, it's kind of easier just to knock the plate back or down to get it where I want it. So I always pull it the furthest forward first. And you can see while turning, everything just clears. And it probably won't be this far out. I'll actually move the mount in towards the engine some. The spring is close. But you can see now why while we mod it because the spring would come in contact with with that inner fender uh, structure right there so that is full full lock on the stop and just coming I mean that would be way back steering isn't connected but if it was around there plenty of room but you can see when you turn it how it moves. Next, I need to measure the travel of the rack and make sure it's not going over six inches. There is a few different ways you can measure it, but uh just show you kind of a quick simple one I mean you can use a micrometer um, just a tape measure and all you really need to do is just find a, a fixed point and measure from there uh, so the first I got to make sure the steering rack was centered the racks tight the steering shaft is tight uh, I just have a spacer an extra spacer right here uh, just so I don't have to really tighten up the bolt I can just hand tighten the the nut there to get this where there's no slack in it and I eyeballed the toe to be basically straight and you know this is at full droop it's this is turned all the way it's on the stop it's on here so when the rack is, uh, or when this, when the car's at ride height, it won't be turning any more than this. I usually run my steering stop out, uh, uh, maybe like a quarter of an inch or so. So I know I'm not going to overextend the rack, even if it it could. I mean, also you can just use your steering stop if your rack does move. But I'll show you how to measure it. Just a quick, easy measurement. And this is before putting the the boot on and the inner tie rod inner tie rod is tightened down so one easy way to do this is just butt the tape measure up against 
this part of the inner tie rod and then come over to the come over to the grease circ right there on the lower control arm and let's see you can go like that And I'm looking like right at this end. It's about 13 and a half. And you can do both sides basically at the same time. Because now, now your inner is sitting inside the rack. Go to that and look here, and it's about 19 and a quarter. And all you need to do is turn the wheel full lock the other way. Take your measurement on both sides. Should be about the same, yeah, 13 and a half. And what it came up with was it's 19 and a quarter minus 13 and a half, that's the short and long uh, uh, measurement, and that comes out to five and three quarters. So um, there's probably a little more travel in there if it wasn't uh, coming up against the boot right here, but that's within spec so yep run with that I'm gonna go over some of the uh, setup in little details I guess on what's left so I've eyeballed the the rack being pretty straight or I wouldn't say the rack I would say the you know the steering wheel and uh, where my toe is the himes are tight and straight up and down and what I usually do on all this stuff is uh, take a paint pen and make a mark so you can see if anything gets loose your wheelbase should now be extended especially if you have uh, installed the arms like this you could install the arms further back to keep the the wheel base the same so you don't cut the fenders uh, have to cut the fenders but I do it where it basically extends the wheelbase I think two inches so center to center you should be at a hundred and four inches and kind of depending on where you uh, set your caster camber plates before you get your alignment in your toe because you know it's gonna it might be a little bit off so uh, I make sure it's close you know hundred and three three quarter 104 somewhere around there until your final alignment and then you can uh you can check it i know you can run run the uh the factory rubber line brake line but these maxim motorsports uh braided lines work real well and you move the mounting point i think the original one is right here I like to move it up kind of like in line with this this seam right here and that gives you plenty of clearance going back and forth it doesn't bind the hose up too much because sometimes the factory hose will kind of bend right here and the tire can rub into it so I move the uh, that mounting point forward this corner uh, I usually bash it in as you can see a little bit uh, I'll see how much it clears I also take the washer bottle and remove that eight millimeter, put a bigger washer on it, and you can see how it's sitting on top and just being held by the the washer. So sometimes right here it can get some rubbing. Uh, and I'll make sure all this is zip tied up. I usually get rid of a, one of the horns 
and just make sure this area is clear. I also like to take my harness and instead of running it right here, I'll zip tie it up here higher. You can pull some slack out of it and run it up higher. Uh, I got the, this is the cruise control, of course that cable and module that sits right here. Uh, we got rid of that, you know, no wheel speed sensors. So there's that. You uh, on this side, you're gonna have your strut mount bolts. The nuts are gonna be, you know, towards the front of the car. That's just how it is from the factory. As far as your caliper bolts, Jan Duncan will give you one of these eight millimeter Allens. So it's an eight millimeter Allen to tighten it up. It's the same. Uh, size for your steering stop and that goes down here and then your regular 15 millimeter will be up there and then just going over um, like preload like I said they come preloaded but you know at full droop you shouldn't have any slack so basically I'm just gonna rotate this and like there's not really much slack there but there is a, a washer right here that kind of gets squeezed down so I like to get it to where it's about squeezed down and then you can uh here I'll use this boogered up one or mark it and go about three turns And that's pretty much going to be your preload right there. So, where there's no slop in the spring, when it's at full droop, you lock that down. And then, once these are tight, I can do this. See if that's tight enough to do it. Yeah. So once you have these uh, tight for the preload, you can come in here and adjust your ride height. If you're going this way to raise it, grab the bottom one. If you want to lower the car, grab the top one. And then you can adjust your ride height that way. You don't have to take it loose and spin it around in case you didn't know that then you would lock it down uh, when I go on the alignment rack that's when I and everything's nice and level that's when I'll you know go around and adjust the ride height you can get it close and even by just you know taking a measurement of so you can get it close and even by taking a measurement of this distance right here so that's just over one and a half yeah one and a half inches showing there so you can go to the other side set it up pretty close uh, same for the back and then when you're you know if you're somewhere level like these these also these have already been pretty much broken in um, but a lot of times, you know, people say, you know, the coil's got to settle, so you might have to drive it, double check your ride height, and adjust it. Uh, get the car on the ground, roll it back and forth, drive it around, let stuff settle. Uh, and also, depending on when you do your caster and camber, you know, you can get some, you know, caster jacking, camber will, will mess with it. So, I kind of just get everything, kind of start setting it in the alignment specs in uh, where I want them and then go and you know check my ride height if it needs to be adjusted I'll check I'll adjust that and then go back and check the rest of my alignment until I get everything just dialed in they do want you to normally uh, 
take like your coil spring off of here and then install your your coil over and then go through the travel uh, to see how everything is going to clear uh, also to do your bump stop measurement you can also take measurements uh, find like the center of your K member and measure over and make sure everything is square your K members sitting square uh, if you want to go through all that then you know you're you're probably going to be able to research it or you know know how to actually do that I've used um, like one of those leveling lasers and put it on the ground and shot a line and measured from each end um, so yeah, I just wanted to mention, you know, you could do that. But I think most people are just going to put this on. They're going to put this on in their driveway, garage, and they're not going to do a whole lot of, you know, specific measuring. Again, this is, you know, just a grassroots fun car. I'm not going into competition and worrying about every little millimeter. Um, so, just thought I'd mention that as well, is... You can, you know, basically laser, laser and plumb bob and uh, check all that stuff. But after doing a couple cars, I found they're pretty much, uh, you know, they come out pretty square. And also the alignment rack that I use will tell me uh, wheelbase, track width, and how square everything is on the car. So I get to kind of cheat where I don't have to really take all those measurements the machine will do it for me and then if you want to adjust that you would adjust you know how far out your himes are in or out um, there might be some movement in this K member to move it around a little bit so I think that's about it I'm gonna start putting this thing back together all right one of the final measurements when you get everything together now, this is going to depend on your alignment as well so this is something I I would check I would check uh, your wheelbase as you're doing your alignment after you do your alignment because toe caster camber things are going to be moving around and it can kind of change so as long as you're close to to this you know when you first get everything installed you should be should be pretty good and if you're by yourself you know, measuring your wheelbase center to center can be kind of tough. Uh, so what I do, if I'm alone, then you can just get this rear stud up on the center. And then do the same up here, or kind of eyeball it. And you can see right there, 104. That's what you're looking for, is 104. And uh, I run a one inch spacer, what is that, 25 millimeter? Um, I run a one inch spacer in the front and also in the back. The back, it just makes it kind of look better uh, so the wheels aren't so tucked in. And then, of course, Maxim Motorsports control arms. Uh, mine are the heavy duty, not the extreme duty, uh, either or. Uh, Jan Duncan dual caliper bracket and the feel true coilovers in the rear factory new upper uh, arms from Maxim Motorsports with new bushings and then uh, Maxim Motorsports pan hand bar Aluminum drive shaft, Ford Performance aluminum drive shaft, and then I don't know if I went over this, but all this has been stitch welded. Let's see if I can get in here. I think I, I think I went over this, but so all the torque boxes, that part of the floor frame rail torque box in here I don't know if you can see all that everything just 
to it, twelve it. And then of course the the Chevy performance mufflers. My wife likes her car quiet, so she likes those mufflers on her car, not the not the glass packs or the one chambers. So yeah, you definitely need a one inch spacer on the front. Um, I do cut my studs so they don't stick out because uh, some of the wheels that I run don't have those cutouts and that way I can run any wheel on any corner. And then I also roll the uh, roll the fender lip. Not my best roll, but I can always go back. This car is getting painted as well, so I didn't really take my time heating everything up. You can see it's cracked here, but I mean, look at this car. It's, it's like four different colors, and is going to get it painted. So, yeah. I just did this so I can get to the the first event and then I'll come back and I can always clean this up. Uh, plus I haven't cut the fender out and the cut usually starts about halfway on this fender. So all this will actually get cut out. It'll just start here. So really the, the fender rolling, but it's better to roll your fender afterwards. Uh, and not just try to roll this when it, after it's cut. I've done that and you will create some waves. <laughs> 